<clears throat> All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everyone. If uh, if you are here for the very first time on uh, one of my Facebook live streams, welcome, welcome. Thank you for for being here. If you could do me a huge favor, uh, drop maybe in the comment, type a number one, type a number one in the comment. That way I know you're here for the first time and we can acknowledge and thank you for being here. Uh, in fact, um, perhaps even type in your name and, and the city you're from as well. So we can uh, once again acknowledge and thank you for, for being here today. I wanna jump right into this. Um, I have a very special guest, a, a dear friend of mine. We've been friends for two to three decades now. He's an individual that, that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Uh, he's, um, He's 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 um, what was the word I'm looking for? He has he has as a businessman, he's built massive organizations and he's helped so many individuals build confidence, self belief in themselves, and really likability. And one of my favorite books is called um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And in my opinion, my friend Elliot Hiller is the modern day version of helping someone, how to become like more likable and how to win more friends and influence people. And so without any further ado, let's jump right into this. Uh, let's welcome my good friend uh, from the UK. I think you're in the UK right now, right, Elliot? I am. Welcome, Elliot. Thank you, Gordon. And I want to say straight away, you are one of my favorite people in the whole world, Gordon. Oh. And one of the things I've always appreciated about you is the way that you connect people, bring people together and spread things out into the world. And it's not only that you do that, but you've got a playful side to you. You're like, you're like a creative artist, you know, mixing colors on the palette before you start painting a picture. You bring people together and you ask a few questions and then you kind of sit back and you kind of playfully wait, well, what could happen here? Something's going to happen. Let's see how they speak to each other. Let's see what's going to happen today. And I love that about you. Thank, thank you so much, Elliot. Elliot, I am, just before we get started, I'm also going to share this with a few of my friends on, um, on Facebook as well. So I'm just sharing this. I'm also doing a, uh, a uh, watch party. And so for any of your friends over in the UK and Europe as well, if you guys are watching, uh, please like and share and, and comment. Okay, and share and share this interview uh, with your friends and 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 so Ellie, I know you know when I was in the, the first time first time I was in the UK. Um, you you um, you were there. We met at um, what was it, the Hilton? Was it the Hilton um, out at um, what was the name of the stadium there? Wembley. Was it Wembley? Wembley Stadium. Hilton, yeah. And then on my family's vacation, we we're we we're in the UK. We were in England and we had to have breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty, not pretty an English breakfast. I love, hmm. Not an English breakfast. They're not healthy, Gordon. English breakfast, right? Well, I oh, love the French terrible re no, terrible reputation. Oily, greasy, baked beans, and oh, terrible stuff for breakfast. Wow. Well, Elliot, you know, for the folks who are here for the first time, they're gonna know that. None of my stuff are scripted. It's all it's all off the cuff. My guests, ones that are organized, are always like, "Okay, what do we do?" And I say, "Trust me, we'll just have a great conversation." And so that's what we're going to do today. Okay. So Elliot, I haven't even prepped you anything. I want to talk about uh, a couple of things today, like commitment, confidence, and likability from your perspective. But before we get into that. Could you, in 30, sec 30 or 60 seconds, share with the folks a little bit about your background? Who is Elliot Hiller? Who is Elliot Hiller? I've been asking myself that for many years now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big question, isn't it? Born in England, London, grew up here, um, started studying in Switzerland uh, mm -hmm. when I was in my 20s. I studied eurythmy therapy, which is a form of movement therapy. Had a great job, uh, job offer after the uh, four years training there in Switzerland in Germany. And I worked in a specialized clinic for addiction therapy for over 20 years. Wow, 20 years. Uh, yeah, over 20 years, all kinds of addictions, not only substances, uh, but also 
other kind of things, gambling addiction, that kind of stuff. But mainly, of course, the substances, heroin, cocaine, alcohol. And uh, we were long-term therapy. So we were able to accompany our, our, our clients over a long period of time, 10 to 12 months. Wow. Uh, I've got a big family, uh, five children. And when they were growing up, I needed more money, even though I was at the top of my game. I started yeah. off in network marketing, uh, ended up with uh, ACN, which is uh, where we really uh, met. I uh, became very yeah. successful uh, in 2005. Well, I'd already retired from my job a couple of years earlier. I, re I retired decades before one would normally retire from one's job. Uh, yeah. I was earning more in a month than I'd been earning in a whole year. And uh, I moved to Malta, a little tiny island in the Mediterranean. Oh, beautiful. It's a holiday island. Yeah. So, you know, this industry helped me to, to live where other people come on holiday. And from there, I've been traveling the world since, written a book, uh, become a record producer, held lots of seminars on charisma and you, likability. Yeah. Personal development is my passion. That's what, I, that's what really gets me going. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. So you had already retired. From actual work, from a job, yeah. from nine to five, yeah. Nine to five. How many years did you do that for, uh, Elliot? Uh, let me see, over 20 years, about 20, 20 years. years. So that's I, like a yeah, I worked in yeah. the clinic, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people, helped a lot of people. And that's where I also learned a lot about personal development, because Gordon, yeah. when, when the people came to us, it wasn't only that they had a problem with addiction, but they yeah. had a problem with self-esteem. Their self-esteem yeah. is not good. And, you know, wow. there's a very thin line between your positive self-esteem and negative self-esteem. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's a very thin line. There's not like a long gray area where maybe, maybe not. It's really one or the other. And we found out that if we worked hard on developing people's gifts, talents and abilities, we didn't have to worry about the negative stuff. So we didn't have to do a lot of, you know, psychotherapy uh, your mummy, your daddy, what happened, traumatic experiences. Obviously, we work, We helped people work through those because they sit deep in each and every one of us. But if we found enough pos possibilities for them to develop something that they could do, then their positive self-esteem would grow and grow and grow. And they'd suddenly be standing, there, well, not suddenly, they'd be standing there in front of us in a different person and it was easier to overcome the addiction. Wow, that's that's incredible. Now, Elliot, you mentioned uh, five kids. I have three, and that that's a handful. I grew up with a family of five. <laughs> and so, uh, you you have grandchildren now. Yes, yes, two, two, two. Yeah, you do as well, right? So this year, you know, the pandemic. People talk about the pandemic, but we've been blessed with a baby granddaughter and a baby grandson. But you have grandchildren as well. I've got six grandchildren. You know. Wow they're growing up in a, a different world not only than we did but than their parents did mm -hmm. and I, you just mentioned pandemic gordon don't you think it's interesting that this year uh, we've been hearing self-isolate people are self-isolating and everything but haven't you seen in society over the last five and ten and fifteen years um a growth towards isolation. People were Absolutely. already self-isolating yes. before this pandemic. If you walk down the road these days, you, you have to watch out. People are looking down at their cell phones, their mobile phones, or they're walking along with their headphones, they're listening to something else. You know, they're in this world, but they're not in this world. Yeah, they're in, they're in, they're in their zone, right? They're in their own world already. Yeah. Yes. Now, I understand that. I understand if you're jogging, if you're going for a long walk, something like that, you know, you want something to take your mind off things, or you can concentrate, it gets you there. But people are isolating more and more and more. And this pandemic yes. somehow reflects a tendency. So play games with the grandchildren. I know you're going to anyway, but I'm saying this for all the people who are listening in now. The board games you know maybe not monopoly but there's a whole bunch of good right. games out there so that if you lose if the child loses 
the child can see the reaction the other person has. They know their own reaction, how it feels to lose. When they win, they see the reaction of the other person to lose. And they're able to read emotions and feel the emotions in the person they're playing with. Why is this important? Because all the studies show that over the last 30 years, there's a huge um, uh, growth in the number of people under the age of 30 and up to 30 who cannot read emotions in the faces of the people that they are talking to. There is a growing disability to be able to read emotions in the faces of the people they're talking to. If you can't mm. do that, you are isolated. Wow. You, you are not able to feel the emotions of other people. You are cut off. How do you develop empathy if you don't know that the other person is suffering, that the other person is in pain? Or how do you experience the joy along with them that you don't realize that they're happy that there's something going on in their world? And wow. a lot of this is coming because uh, the children are growing up playing games online. And there you press a button, oh, you killed someone or you got killed, start again, rewind, wow. delete, you know. But in a human being, there's no automatic delete button. You can't just press it and, wow, the traumatic experience is gone. Yeah, oh. there isn't, is it? Yeah. Interesting. So, Ellie, with, with, with your, the experiences that you have, as you transition into um, retirement, into um, the direct sales network marketing industry, did you find people were kind of, were you able to use the skill set that you already had with people along with your network marketing business? Yes, that's the short answer. Let me expand on that. Okay. Network marketing business and direct sales is about people. And I found that I was training the business how to do this, how to acquire customers, how to find partners. But I started adding on something about personal development when I realized that a lot of people weren't having success because they weren't ready for the disappointments. They couldn't ah. deal with the disappointments. So it's I started- kind of like what you just said about kids growing up, right? Hello. Hello. Wow. Okay. And I started to tell them so. When you start speaking to, spe to, to people, you can't have expectations. You have to manage your expectations. You can hope that someone will become your customer. You can hope that someone will become your business partner, but don't expect them to do that. Gordon, you've got so much experience, not only in that industry. You know how often people have said to you, some of your partners have said to you, Gordon, I've got a guest coming to the presentation tonight. Yeah, they don't show oh, up, when right? they come in, we're going to take over the whole you know, of the town, yes, the city, yes. the country, the continent. There, it's number one. They yes. come, they don't join the person. Oh, whoa. And so they're disappointed. Absolutely. And then comes the blame game. You yeah. didn't do a good presentation or you let someone on the stage who wasn't a good speaker, didn't do a presentation. So wow. we've, got all, we've got all the aggression and we've got the, 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 the loss of self-esteem because they brought someone along who said, no, they've got a loss of face in front of you because they told you they were going to be great. So I started training um, yes. for about two thirds on how to do the business. And the last third, of my time was spent on personal growth. And when I had leaders and we had leaders meetings, I recommend, recommended books to them uh, to read. Obviously the one you mentioned at the beginning of our talk, yes. and obviously, obviously Napoleon uh, Hill. You know, I love Think and Grow Rich, but my favorite one from Napoleon Hill is actually Success with a Positive Mental Attitude. Right. Wow. Positive mental attitude, I like that. Why, why do you think, you know, Elliot, I, I ran across a lot of entrepreneurs and they read books, right? Like Think and Grow Rich and books you're talking about. They say they have a positive attitude, but their lives and their businesses are a mess. Why, why do you think that's so? Great question, Gordon. Excellent. One of the things that we really worked on in the clinic, it, and I practiced this for 20 years, I'm so grateful to my experience there, is that it's not enough to read something, it's not enough to understand something, you need to incorporate it into your being, into your inner core. 
and there you need exercises. Mm -hmm. So I'm really strong on giving exercises which are simple to do, but you do them over a specific period of time. And I'm not talking about a month. I don't like giving exercises to people and say, do this for a month. I say, hmm. it would be ideal if you did it for four weeks, but hey, let's go for one week. Yeah. Right. And after the right. first week, Eight you can percent. decide whether you're going to do it for the second week or not. Wow. Yeah? And then most of the exercises that I give only take a few seconds a day, or they might take a bit longer, you know, last thing in the evening, it might be review of your day. You know, if you want to be likable, start being a nice person. So yes, try and find the possibility to give three compliments during the day that come from your heart to people you know, to complete strangers. And at the end of the day, when you're lying in bed, remember these three compliments that you gave, remember the situation, picture it, picture the interaction with the other person, even if it was only a couple of seconds. Now that's a short exercise. Mm. Do that for one week, every night before you go to sleep, there'll start to be a change in you. I'm not gonna tell you oh, what, wow. I'm not gonna tell you what, find out for yourself. And one of my favorite thing is giving a compliment to someone walking their dog. People love wow. their animals, they love their dogs. And yes. if, when you're walking past them, you don't even have to stop. When you're walking past them, just yeah. say, oh, nice dog. Yeah. Look, oh, thank you. Yeah. And yeah. keep on walking. Yeah. I, I love, which I, you know, I've never had a dog in my life. And two Christmas ago, Elliot, my brother-in-law, they went on a cruise. So I looked after the dog for a week. And I had so many compliments from people. Nice dog, nice dog, right? There yeah. I think, I how, think it's how did you to win friends and influence people, get a dog. <laughs> yeah. And how did you feel when someone said that to you, nice dog? Well, what a great feeling, right? Yes. What a great feeling, yeah. So compliments, so you think, um, so you talk, talk to me a little bit, you know, talk to me a little bit about why is compliment, in your opinion, that so important then in business? Why is it so important? Because you are doing something for someone else that you didn't have to do. Mm. Because you're learning generosity of spirit. Because you know how you feel when someone gives you a compliment. And now you're going out of your way, stepping out of your zone, out of your isolation. Mm to reach out to someone else and to give them something. It's your step towards making a connection, giving them a feeling, yeah? And this stepping out of yourself is something that's, you know, it's an, it's an archetype in all the fairy tales. Gordon, think about all the fairy tales. God bless the Brothers Grimm, yeah? They collected right. all those fairy tales and children should be hearing them from their parents, you know, not just a recorded CD to help them get off at night or something, but parents read books to your children while yes, they're yeah. growing up. And all the archetypes in there who needed love, who needed empathy, who needed uh, support, they were isolated, you know. Sleeping Beauty, Gordon, yes. she was isolated, yeah? Yes. Snow White. Snow White, yeah. Snow White, put her in the yeah. glass coffin. That's isolation okay. in there. Who, who, who was in the tower? Who was in the tower? Uh, Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Rapunzel yes. in yeah. the tower. And what, how symbolic. She had to grow the hair and let it down so that, you know, the prince could climb up and down and she could escape. The one that really gets me in the tower, the man in the iron mask. Wow. Oh, well, the man in the iron mask. I remember that movie not only is he in the tower cut off from the world yes own, in the world but not in the world he can only look out the world through a, a small slit you know and see other people doing their thing but he can't do a thing so he's not only got that but now you don't even know who he is wow because you can't see his face you can't see his emotions you can't read emotions into that iron mask Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So compliments, 
Uh, you know, folks, if you're joining us, thank you so much. If you're here for the first time again, type a one in the comments so we can acknowledge you being here. I see someone named uh, Andrea Grubinger. Did I say that right? You did. Oh. She's a wonderful lady who lives in Austria. Austria, welcome, welcome, Andrea. Wow, that's that's amazing. So uh, I'm putting you on the spot, Elliot, because again, um, we didn't have a script. You talk about compliment with a C. I'm going to give you another C. Let's talk about commitment. What can you tell me about commitment for the folks that are watching? What what does commitment mean to you, and how important is that in business? Oh, it's really important. You know, being a person of your word. You know, mm. you say he's a man of his word or a woman of his word. You can rely on them. But commitment uh, also has a lot to do with discipline. We're coming back to discipline again, aren't we? And, and yes. willpower, commitment to do the thing that you said you would do. Now, very possibly you said it when you were elated or excited or in a certain mood. Wow. And the next day or a couple of days later, you might not have the same amount of adrenaline and and, and positive neurons right. running through your brain. <laughs> yeah, when All you wake up. It's gone, right? <laughs> yeah, where did that go? But commitment is doing the thing that you said that you would do long after the mood in which you said it has gone. Wow. And that takes willpower. Now, what people don't understand about willpower is that it's actually like a muscle. Hmm. And if you don't exercise your muscle, it gets weak and flabby, doesn't it? Wow. Willpower needs to be used. So here again, one of my little exercises is to develop your willpower. For example, take a book, put yes. a postcard or a photo in the book, anywhere in the book, and decide that every day at a certain time, you are going to open the book, take out the postcard, turn a page and put the postcard back in. Yes. Close the book and put it back where it was. So in itself, it's a meaningless act, isn't it? Yes. We're not asking you to read the page of the book. We're not writing, you, not asking you to write the postcard to someone. Yeah, just do it every day for a week and see what happens to your willpower. You committed wow. to do it. You did it. Again, it's these little exercises which will build up your willpower. And wow. there are so many examples of what you can do to build up your willpower. Now, when you've got willpower, you've also got discipline because commitment is being disciplined. Wow. I love it. You know, Elliot, you're such a good teacher. You have, um, you have a program, a course, uh, likability, the likability factor course. And I know you gave me a sneak preview of it and you're going to laugh because um, you know, how, how many people still remember DVDs, right? DVD players and DVD jackets. And, and, and after watching one of your, um, one of your training, I like, I asked my wife, like, where are our DVDs? I mean, cause nobody watches the, at least, you know, like it's Amazon prime or Netflix. So she had to go find like boxes of DVDs and I took it out and I used one of your exercises. Right? So you probably know the one that I'm talking about. So yes, I don't want I to do. give it away because if folks, if you know, if you're watching, um, I know Elliot has helped so many individuals all around the world. You know, for example, we have some folks out here that have real estate offices. They have several hundred agents in their office. You know, Sabir Chawala, I'll be interviewing him later this afternoon, or Akil. You know, he's he's looking at building. Uh, over 300 to 1,000 sales reps for his insurance company. If you're someone like that out there right now, you definitely should reach out to Elliot. His likability course, right? What, what did you say? Likability equals? Uh, your likability determines your successibility. Oh, determines your successibility. Yeah. So the folks that are out there, if, you, if you're in sales, you lead a sales team, you definitely want to reach out to Elliot and have him maybe share that program because, you know, despite of um, the pandemic, th this course could be taught online on Zoom or a webinar, would you agree? I do. Yeah, so def definitely reach out to, to Elliot. I wish I could share more about it, but when I watched part of that training, yeah, yeah. 
So my wife's still upset at me because I haven't put the DVDs back yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't don't get me into trouble, Gordon. No, no. <laughs> um, well, she was very appreciative, Elliot, because when we visited England, right, it was a family trip, but she knew I wanted to get together with you, and and we did. So that was that was very kind of you as well. So Elliot, we talked about um, what did we talk about? Commitment. What was the first one? Um, for the C. Are you testing my short-term memory? <laughs> got, now I'm forgetting. Like Napoleon Hill says like six goals of fears is age. What do we talk, talk? Just I guess we'll have to watch the replay. Commitment, discipline, Commitment. willpower, um, empathy. We've covered all of those today, I think. Let's talk about let's talk about character. I'll throw that word out of you, character. What would you say about character? Well, it really does define who we are, doesn't it? But it's also a question of how much can you stay true to yourself? You know, Shakespeare, be thine own self. Mm. Shakespeare, 500 years ago, the man is, has still got wisdom, which is so relevant today. Read some Shakespeare. Yeah, mm. be true to yourself. But it's not easy to be true to yourself if you haven't got that inner strength, if you're not discovering yourself, and you only discover yourself if you're pushing yourself towards new barriers, new uh, expanding your horizons, reaching out to other people, reading books, informing yourself. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, we're coming full circle back to self-isolation because yes, all yes. this lockdown all over the world is hindering people in developing themselves and having contact uh, with each other and, and developing uh, their character. Look, we've all got good sides to our character. We've all, all got difficult sides to our character that we should be working on. It's only a question of which has the upper hand. As I mm -hmm. said at the beginning, our clients coming into the clinic, their negative self-esteem was outweighing their positive uh, self-esteem. So that means that they'd have more of their negative, difficult characteristics on display in the world than their good kind characteristics. Help mm -hmm. people develop, help people grow, help people right. find a meaning, help people discover a purpose and watch how their good characteristics come out. When, when people are happy, they're so much nicer to be around and, and yeah. suddenly getting invited to places and you want to see them again and you want to speak to them. And people look at them and they say, oh, no, oh, they're popular. Oh, well done. Yeah, it, they didn't just land on their feet like that. You know, there are very few of us born with that silver spoon in our mouth or with that um, gift of the gods, which is called charisma, as the Greeks right. called it. It's a gift of the gods, charisma, either you've got it or you haven't. But we, right. can, we can say today what the characteristics are of people who have charisma. And if you start working on them and try and develop them, doesn't mean that you're going to be charismatic, be a charismatic person, but it means you're going to be a lot more likable. And likability right. is important. Gordon, if two people go for a job, same qualifications, mm -hmm. same age, same status in life, yeah, who's going to get the job? The one who's more likable, the wow. one who makes a better impression. Love that. So charisma was actually the next word I was going to ask you in the C-series, charisma. You mentioned, um, you know, we're not all of us are born with charisma. So for someone like us who don't have charisma to start off with, is it something that can be developed? Um, well, as I just said, it, this is a debate amongst the experts. Okay. There are those who say charisma is something you're either born with or not. There are others who say copy and practice the habits of charismatic people Right. And if you do that enough, you will become charismatic. Mm. So I don't commit myself to one or the other here. Yes. I say what I just said to you before, you will definitely become more likable. Likeable. Now, and the more likable oh, you, you are. Yes. So you just gave me a nice distinction. Right? Yeah. So, you know, Elliot, I would see you, you know, I, I'd be in the UK, or even when you flew here to Toronto, and you spoke in front of our, our Empowering Women to Succeed event, I, I still remember um, sharing with a group that, um, you know, I'm bringing my, my friend Elliot Hiller from Malta. He's coming in 
and he's going to be, you know, uh, one of our speakers at the Empowering Women to Succeed event. And and you can imagine while well, you were there, 80 to 90 percent of the audience were women, and their comments were, well, why would you have a men come in and speak at a women's conference? And your charisma, Elliot, you had everyone standing on their feet, you had everyone dancing, you had everyone smiling. So I thought that was really, really neat. But I think what you just taught me just now, correct me if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm right, sometimes charisma doesn't have to be like me trying to get in front of a room like you. If charisma may be whatever, whatever, I'm, whatever I'm personally good at and passionate about, just be good at that. And use that to serve that gift to serve others, and that could be maybe my charisma. Is is that right? Or absolutely, yeah. whoever you're with at that moment mm. is the person who you're supposed to be with at that moment, and that's mm. the person who you can serve the best at that moment by giving them the best part of yourself. And the best part of yourself is going to be your likable part. Is going to be the part with your good characteristics, and uh, you'll be getting a reflection back from them, which in turn will help you with your self-esteem, with your likability, with your everything. It's not one-way traffic in life. It goes wow. both ways. The more you're handing out the compliments, the more you're being likable, the more it will come back to you, the better, nicer, more productive life you will have. Wow, that's amazing. Um, we have Reiner, Reiner Kraus. Reiner from Germany. From Germany. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh -huh. again, very nice guy. Welcome, Ryan. Well, my mother-in-law is German, as you know. Yes. So the only word I know in German is bitter. Yes. Bitter. <laughs> That's yes. the only word I know, but welcome, Ryan. Yeah. Which should not leave a bitter taste in your mouth because the word means please. Please, so, yes. Yeah. yeah. I remember being in Germany, Elliot, and as you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't drink. I may have the occasional glass of wine. So... If I have like this much beer, my head would spin. So we're in Germany and I finally discovered that ordering water was just as expensive as ordering beer. And there was one place we were at and I think the, the beers were like probably like this big, like the jugs. And I asked him if I could have a small. And he says, sorry, <laughs> this is a small. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've been in Germany, so you know that the reputation that they have in so many parts of the world is absolutely ridiculous. When I tell people I lived 20 years in, in Germany, they so, say, oh, how did you manage that? Like, you know, like I had, I had some kind of illness. I was, you know, I was, I was banished to Germany for 28 years. No, beautiful country, lovely beautiful? people, great yeah. sense of humor. And that's what I wanted to say, great sense of humor. They can party. And, and Rainer Krauss, who you just mentioned, what a hospitable person. He and his mm -hmm. wife, uh, Christina, you know, just yes, exemplary yes. For, for, for all the other German friends uh, who I have and all the people who I know, um, just very warm hearted and great sense of, of humor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Well, Elia, thank you so much for joining me. We're at the bottom of the hour now. Um, I'd love to have you come back again. Love to have you come back again. Maybe I'll have here. to think of that yeah. a bit if you twist my arm. Yeah. <laughs> Elliot, before we go, um, Land for Success, we have um, a series coming up, a book series, and it's collaboration books. And as you know, one of my passion, like yours, is stories. We know that facts tell stories, sells, and stories are so important for individuals who are writing it whether it's for their own personal healing, uh, to use their story as a, uh, as a tool for more credibility for their business. With all the successes you've already had, like, and you've already written your own book and, you, and, and you're a record, you produced a record. And so there, there's so many things we could talk about. Why did you choose to contribute one of your stories or a chapter to Landon for Success? Would you mind if I, if I ask you that? Um. Everything that we've done up until now, Gordon, could be gathered together as a speck of dust and put on the tail of one mouse in the whole world and carried away in the terms of importance in this whole wide world universe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
So do you want to rest on your laurels, people, for everything that you've done in the past? Or do you want to keep on creating and moving forward and enjoying new experiences? I was humbled to be invited to contribute a chapter. And, you know, we've, we've had a, a Zoom meeting with the other yes. people in the book. What a collection of great individuals. Yes. Wow. I feel honored to have my chapter in there. And I've actually put two stories in there from my time in the clinic, uh, just to show how important it is to be true to your word and also to have that inner connection with that inner voice when it's right to say something and to be ready to say something in a moment. So two stories in my chapter, but um, I was happy to contribute, not only because you asked me and and, you know how much I love and, and revere and respect yeah. you Gordon so that was it but also to move on everything we've done up until now was a pre pre preparation for now and for everything yeah. that's coming wow well thank you it's, it's an honor for us to have you uh be part of our family the volunteer series and night for success Ellie before I let you go I want to put you on the hot seat and ask you three quick questions you agree with that rapid fire questions okay answer Whatever first comes to your mind. Um, Ellie, what's your favorite color? Favorite color? Color, yes. Purple. Purple. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite ice cream? Anything vegan. Anything vegan. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a vegan, so okay. vegan vanilla ice cream. Ah, okay. And so if you could wave a magic wand right now and do one thing, for Elliot, not for somebody else, because I know you're such a heart center entrepreneur, leader, and you're always thinking about somebody else. You always think, you know, family, mom. You're always thinking about somebody else first. Okay. If you could do wave a, wave a magic wand and do one thing for Elliot right now, what would you do? I've got a few to pick from. I'll tell you what I'll give you in this talk. Good health going forward. Good health is the basis for a happy life. Wow. Look, after, look, after, our, look after our health. It'll give us a springboard to do everything else that we've been talking about today. That's amazing. Well, Elliot, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, for the folks who are watching, thank you so much for, for watching. If, um, if you want to connect with my friend, Elliot uh, Hillard, leave a comment or a direct message me. And I'm happy, more than happy to connect you directly with, um, with Elliot. Actually, Elliot, well, well, just before we, we finish here, I, I know we're over time. I just thought of one other thing. Um, you have 60 more seconds here? Yes. You've produced a record. Yes. I love those songs. I've listened to every one of them. Thank you. You have one particular song that you want a particular maybe artists one day to sing that song. Would you mind talking, are you able to talk a little bit about that song and why? Um, talking about my time has come. Yes, yes. My time has come, yeah. Um, I do, well, you know, um, I actually had that song while Whitney Houston was still alive. I met Whitney, mm. Whitney Houston one time in, uh, in LA. Yes. Wow. Um, she yeah. would be perfect to sing that song. Wow. Absolutely. And yeah. I went up to her and I spoke to her, you know. Uh, she was so gracious. And I understood in that moment, Gordon, what a diva is in the most positive sense of the world. She was glorious. She had an aura and yes. she was kind and we spoke together and yeah. uh, she gave me the email address of her uh, brother-in-law, who was also a manager, so that I could send the song and she could listen to it. She was absolutely wonderful, a delightful person, Whitney Houston. Mm. Unfortunately, she passed away. She left us too early, right? Sorry? Yeah. I was saying she left us too early. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've got people, and I think you're one of them, saying that Celine Dion would be a perfect person to sing this song. My time has come. My time has come. Not like, oh, I'm finding, you know, I'm going away. It's not. Uh, it's not yeah. Bob Dylan. It's not Bob Dylan's knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. It's not right. the light is getting dim. It's uh, hey, my time has come to shine. My, my time, time has come to achieve what I want to achieve. It's it's one yes. of those positive songs. 
Yeah. Let's put so, it out there. Let's so put it out there. I, I, I want to maybe reach out to knows, Celine. Maybe somebody knows Celine. So let's put it out there in the universe. Maybe somebody knows Celine Dion, right? We don't know. Like somebody knows somebody who knows. Is the song available? Can can we can they listen to it on iTunes? How can they listen to that song? Uh, it's on Spotify. The album is on Spotify. Spotify. Uh, you have to go to the album Low and Behold. The and is written with that sign Low and sign, Behold. Okay. Yeah, and the singer is Lawrence J. Yeah, Lawrence she's J. she's a wonderful singer, Lawrence, and then J J A Y. Find it on Spotify. It's yeah, a beautiful there's a, whole, there's a whole album on there, but listen to my time has come. Anyone knows Celine Dion can put me in touch with her. Yeah, I, I, I'm putting out a few feelers myself as well. Yeah, you. let's do it. You just never know, right? You never like, know. You know, your fav- you, you and I have one, one of our favorite authors, Napoleon, thoughts or things. What are you, what are you thinking about? Right? So. Yes, I'm thinking about Celine Dion singing that song, Gordon. I, I can see it already. I see it. You see it, Macau you see it, of, and I hear it. Macau in front of 10,000 people, and there you are make, introducing her, and she steps up into the, on the stage and sings, my time has come. Gordon, I'll invite you when that happens. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we can have breakfast together. Yes, that'd again. be so amazing. Well, Elia, once again, thank you so much. I so appreciate you, and thank you for your words of wisdom, and I look forward to having you back on here again. And folks, thank you so much for for being here with us and yeah um until the next time uh, ellie do you have any final thoughts or I, I want to say thank you to you i'm really grateful to you gordon i always love Likewise. talking to you we have these kind of talks and now we've done it in front of and with other people as well been an absolute delight you're such a special person gordon thank you so much you're very welcome elliot it's my pleasure have an amazing day evening elliot and everyone else uh, thank you thank you bye for now, bye for now.